So you've likely come across the term agentic AI before, which is an approach of putting generative AI into practice to perform predetermined actions on behalf of the user, with typically a very narrow scope of perceived knowledge and influence surrounding the specific task that the AI has been trained to assist the user to do. And if we consider what this potentially means in the context of e-learning, there's actually a wide ranging scope of influence that an agentic wrapper, as it were, can have to support the learning experience. Specifically in the moments, for example, where we'd be able to assist with the guidance and navigation through a crafted learning activity. But beyond the scope of what is happening within that moment of interactivity is the way in which data can flow between the e-learning experience and our learning platform. Through the use of function calls, which we can develop for our agents, we can generate learning analytical data that can lead to better insights reporting, but also customization and adaptive tailoring of the learning experience going forward, which can perhaps trickle into other learning experiences which our users undertake. And this makes me think of a post that I recently saw on LinkedIn by Josh Cavalier, who quoted a term that I think he heard at DevLearn, the self-healing course. So the idea with that is that the learning experience can become better over time for its audience based on the analytics that each experience can share with one another. I'm going to come back to this at some point in the future as I'm definitely interested in exploring this idea further. For what we have accessible to us right now, for the best agentic AI-driven experience are without doubt delivered by real-time voice activated models such as the OpenAI Real-Time Beta. This recently received a few updates including some additional voices that can be listened to in the sandbox playground area, as well as some tweaks to the pricing structure for what are termed recycled tokens, but we'll look at the cost of things in just a second. So what I wanted to demonstrate in my recent post was some of the baseline steps that we are able to to take working with a model like the OpenAI Real-Time API, working alongside a standard e-learning experience which we might develop in a tool like Articulate Storyline. So you'll see in my app here that I've written in Node.js that we initialize a WebSocket to the OpenAI platform and with that we can then start what's called a session and the idea with this is that we can provide initial instruction to the AI for effectively the role that is intended to be taken during the experience. So this is where we could potentially be highly detailed in our AI modeling as well as feeding domain knowledge that the AI might need to know about and then we can deploy what are called function calls which are part of the driver set for what agentic controls the AI assistant can utilize during the conversation. And again, these can have specific focus on what the user experience is intended to deliver. So what I've done is I've created this function which is designed to provide that navigation capability to the AI in order to have it change the slide on behalf of the user based on the question that they are asking. So for example, if I'm asking a question specifically about the Peregrine Falcon, then the AI can call upon this function in order to change this property value to true, and then this property can update what is going on in the front end user experience. And if I show you what's going on here in our activity, you'll see that I've got the triggers in place ready to act upon any of those function calls that are being made. So in effect, as soon as the variable changes that we need to show the Peregrine Falcon slide and that Boolean has changed to true, then the trigger effectively takes place in Articulate Storyline. And I've got that set up on each slide for all of the other slides that are available within the e-learning activity. So if I go ahead and launch my app here in Visual Studio Code, You'll see the response coming through straight away from the session create function, effectively confirming the persona that is going to be taken by the AI during this session. So here, for example, we have a recognition of the instructions that the AI is going to be taking, along with the function calls that it will call upon whenever it feels the need to do so. So let's take on the role of the user and try engaging with the AI. Hey, Storyline, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How can I assist you with information about the American bald eagle, the peregrine falcon, or the puffin? So it's nice that we're getting that friendly response, kind of guiding us to take the next step for what the agent is able to do for us. So let's ask a question. Can you tell me something that's really cool about the peregrine falcon? 
Absolutely. The peregrine falcon is known for being the fastest bird and in fact, the fastest animal on the planet. During its hunting stoop, high-speed dive, it can reach speeds of over 240 miles per hour, 386 kilometers per hour. This impressive speed makes the peregrine falcon an incredibly efficient predator. So the real-time API is built on the GBT4 or large language model and so has that wide breadth of knowledge to call upon to answer a question like that. But we could have also given specific instruction to answer a question with a certain response as part of our session instruction. And if we take a moment to look at what is happening during the data flow between our app and the storyline front end, you can see that all of this audio delta is being generated and returned by the OpenAI API. And this all comes in uh, streaming, also instantaneous at the point when we have sent our own audio delta package to the OpenAI system to process. We can then start streaming all of this audio delta back to the front end in order to play and stream even before the final package of audio delta has even arrived and this is what effectively allows us to remove as much of the lag as possible to create the almost real-time effect that the model is capable of. And here in the front end of Storyline, you can see where that function call is taking effect with the Boolean data that's been sent by our app to control the user experience. It wanted to make sure that the user was looking at the Peregrine Falcon slide in order to support the user experience at that moment. And then just one more point I wanted to cover with regards to the cost that typically kind of comes with using the real-time API. I wanted to show you, for example, uh, the cost that I was incurring when I was going through the bulk of development for the experience that you were just seeing. So for example, you can imagine that for about six or seven hours, I was constantly querying the AI and asking it questions and getting a response in real time. Uh, so over that period of two to three days, you can see that typically the real time API was costing me anywhere between eight to uh, $13. So you can start to put a picture together from this in terms of how much it may ultimately cost to run something like this with continuous use, but also having a much larger user base. So there's definitely more to build onto this right now. And the next step for me is going to be how we can take what is the uh, text transcription of the audio that has been returned by the AI and have this be displayed as closed captions at the same time as the audio being streamed in the browser. So it's going to be a really exciting year ahead for learning experience design enhanced by generative AI technology. And you can expect to see more from me demoing this stuff very soon.